Yeah, well, hello, everybody, and uh, it's great to speak to you today. My name is Greg Cooper. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the School of Oriental and African Studies. And today I'd like to share some of the preliminary uh, outcomes and findings from the Market Intervention for Nutritional Improvement Project. We are modeling the ways in which aggregation schemes may be able to improve the delivery of fruits and vegetables to often more local and more rural markets in Bihar, in India, and Ashur in Bangladesh. So these aggregation schemes are traditionally uh, farmer facing. And essentially they are circular systems whereby the collection, transportation, and collective marketing of multiple farmers produce can provide some quite stark farmer facing benefits. And these include removing the need for farmers to actually visit the market themselves. These include the provision of higher capacity transport forms and the sharing of transport costs. And also the establishment and and, and strengthening of links between smallholders, smallholder farmers, and often larger traders in markets who are looking to buy in bulk. However, the implications for these schemes, particularly for consumers dependent on often more local and more rural markets, are uncertain. We know that urban value chains are lengthening and the provision of an aggregation vehicle itself you know, facilitates strengthened flows towards these urban markets and, and more distant markets. And on the flip side, we know that often well, local markets are fairly inadequate in terms of their ability to absorb multiple tons worth of an aggregation and also have relatively underdeveloped market infrastructure and, and transport infrastructure. And this is all playing out upon a, kind of a background of some recent reforms uh, within the Indian agricultural system, which have looked to increase flows of fruits and vegetables across state lines and better connect farmers to traders, larger traders. Sorry. And coming together, these, these factors present a potential problem whereby we know that agricultural systems should, be, they should, um, should work for all and should be able to uh, provide benefits to all and leave no one behind. And interventions such as aggregation should be able to produce uh, positive outcomes for producers, but also consumers. And this is where the mini project comes in and, and our modeling which looks to find scenarios which increase the availability of, and affordability of fruits and vegetables in these local uh, market environments through the use of aggregation. And in particular, we're then interested in the trade-offs which may arise from aggregation and through the diversion of fruits and vegetables to the smaller markets, and particularly the trade-offs for farmer-facing out, farmer outcomes, such as jet revenue generation, profit generation, and also the functioning and, and longer-term sustainability of the aggregation scheme itself. So I won't go much into the modeling and I would just say the actual methodology, but I would just encourage anybody who is interested in the design and the parameterization, the validation of the model to follow the, the link below here. Um, just to say that we are using systems dynamics modeling and to give a kind of a one slide schematic of our, of our model, the, the population, the stock of the farmers in the model can choose whether to join the aggregation scheme, essentially join the, the loop aggregation scheme. And on any given day when they have uh, fruits and vegetables available to market, they can choose to supply the aggregation scheme or they can choose to, uh, to go it alone to the market and potentially incur higher uh, transport costs. And then the loop farmers and a, a select proportion of the non-loop farmers can choose whether to supply the larger urban market uh, which has the availability of distance traders who look to export multiple tons of fruits and vegetables to, to more distant markets. And the kind of over, overall capacity of these larger markets is set to be around 100 tons per day. Or more local, you know, kind of more rural based markets with a, a capacity of perhaps 15 to 20 tons per day and a relatively select kind of subset of traders. And then the retail elements of these markets then essentially provide fruits and vegetables for uh, household consumers who are looking to purchase uh, you know, a couple of kilograms of fruits and vegetables for household consumption. We are particularly interested in the scenarios which improve the availability and the affordability of fruits and vegetables for these, more, uh, for these consumers who are more dependent on the local retail market. And then explore some of the trade-offs which feed back up the system upon the on the farmers in the aggregation system itself. Now, just to give you a very brief overview of three of our scenarios that we've modeled so far and some of the trade-offs for the consumer facing outcomes on the, the right hand side of this trade-off diagram and also the producer facing outcomes on the left hand side. 
And these scenarios are compared to a baseline simulation whereby the number of farmers in the aggregation scheme increases from around about 10% of the total population to around about 20% of the total population over the, over the five year simulation. And if we divert, actively divert 30% of the aggregation volume on any given day to the smaller, more local market, we see um, positive, albeit insignificant increases in the demand for fruits and vegetables, uh, improvements in price for the consumer, so a cheapening of the fruits and vegetables available, and also the actual uptake of the fruits and vegetables from, these mar from the local markets. However, what we see is that the descending 30% of the aggregation is actually too much for the capacity of the market and essentially more of the aggregation remains unsold and essentially there's then a significant negative trade-off on the transport costs and the service charge uh, service charges recovered by the aggregation scheme relative to the baseline where more fruits and vegetables are, are being sent to the larger urban markets. Now what if we rapidly upscale the aggregation scheme and have around about 70% of all farmers being involved in aggregation by the end of the fifth year? What we see is significant trade-offs on uh, the consumer facing outcomes in these more local markets in terms of the, the availability and the affordability of the fruits and vegetables and this is because the upscaling of the aggregation scheme strengthens some of the, the feedbacks with the more urban focused markets and we see an increase or an improvement in the average transport costs that farmers in the model face and we also see an increase in the, the, the kind of revenues gen generated by the actual aggregation scheme but significantly a negative trade-offs on the availability and affordability in these smaller markets. And lastly, what if we combine uh, sending 20% of aggregation on any given day with uh, increasing the demand for fruits and vegetables in these markets by 3% each year, and also establish cold storage, which increases the, the lifespan of the fruits and vegetables from two days to around about 21 days at a maximum. What we see is significant improvements in the outcomes the consumer facing outcomes in terms of the availability and the affordability of fruits and vegetables in these markets. And we're able to overcome any negative trade offs associated with wastage or lower revenues for farmers. And I'll just leave you with these, these conclusions and just to say that aggregation does have the potential to increase the availability and affordability of fruits and vegetables in local markets. However, we have to think about, we have to think about these scenarios carefully to avoid generating feet, to avoid generating trade offs on either the producers or the consumers are perhaps overestimating the capacity, capacity of ma markets or um, you know, inadvertently strengthening the flows of fruits and vegetables to urban regions. I'll leave it at that and say thank you very much for watching and um, I look forward to the discussion on the 2nd of July and um, see you then. Thank you.